Hello and welcome to today's Marketing Monday session on a super interesting topic that is the biggest challenge for MarTech leaders, shrinking marketing, marketing budgets due to economic uncertainty and cost pressures. I am Naveen Singhal, Chief Experience Officer, Tech Plus Media, CXO TV and your host for today. In the era of economic uncertainty and cost pressures, business across industries are grappling with the challenge of shrinking marketing budgets. As companies tighten their belts and face uncertain market conditions, marketing departments are tasked with achieving impactful outcome while operating with limited resources. With these prevailing trends, marketing professionals are confronted with the need to optimize their strategies, allocate resources effectively and drive maximum impact. The pressure to demonstrate a strong ROI is higher than ever, requiring innovative and cost-effective approaches. In this Marketing Monday session, we are honored to have Raghu Raghavan, Vice President of Global Marketing at Aspire Systems, who brings a wealth of expertise in marketing. Raghu will share his valuable insights on prioritization, leveraging technology and creative solution to navigate these challenging times successfully. Hi Raghu, welcome to CXO TV for an insightful discussion. Great to be here uh, in, the, in the CXO TV edition. Thanks for inviting. Though you need no introduction, still we would request you to introduce yourself in brief and then we shall take up a very interesting topic, shrinking marketing budgets. Sure. Um, well, I have uh, over two decades of uh, marketing experience, both in the US and India. And uh, uh, in my current company, Aspire Systems, I've been heading the marketing for almost nine years now. And uh, I probably joined Aspire when the whole digital era started to become big. And I'm fortunate that that has opened, for, at least not just for me, for all marketers to expand their marketing expertise and reach out. I was saying, like starting new worlds for us, the new markets, new ways of doing things. So uh, I've been fortunate enough to work with a great team and I've learned a lot. And um, it's been a great journey. So, you know, um, I'd love to uh, give my insights into marketing in the current environment. Well, that's great. So uh, we would request you to throw some light on how has the current economic uncertainty impacted the marketing budgets across industries and what are the common trends or challenges faced by the companies in managing the shrinking budgets? I think uh, typically I like to uh, uh, segment the marketing budget into one is the offline and online right? A lot of times offline budgets are like if you're going to attend an event in any part of the world. That's so those are big budgets. I think those budgets have been uh, critically uh, uh, affected, like travel, right? So anything to do with travel has been critically affected. And the good thing is those can be offset with digital. So I think a lot of companies and depending on the segment, for example, if you're on the banking, in the insurance, uh, retail, uh, where consumer spending is down. So obviously those budgets are affected. But if you look at technology sector, I don't think the effect has been that much because because of the uh, digital era, budgets are still being optim optimized. I think what also is happening is optimization is a continuous process. So whether uh, there's a downturn or upturn, you keep optimizing it. So when there's a downturn, you're already ready for it. And uh, I think that's also happening. I mean, if you look at funded companies, uh, obviously pressure from the VCs to um, uh, make sure that they don't they burn less money than before. So their optimization happens that. I think the biggest challenge is last couple of years due to COVID, there's a, there was a huge boom. So hiring is kind of bloated, right? So now companies are rethinking the strategy. Hey, did, did we hire more? Did we spend too much? Maybe now is the time we need to relook. I think that has kind of given a lot of hype to the downturn. If not for COVID, things would have been much more different, I feel. Not the other ways everyone is talking about. The uh, uh, marketing budgets, how it's got affected uh, depending on the industry. So I know a lot of companies where the goal for them uh, is to grow faster then they have not uh, cut the budgets they are still going at it so it depends what your ultimate objective is but the fact that the roi doesn't change they stress on the roi part so uh, it's been uh, it depends on which industry you are in right now so some of the industries where like uh, retail uh, some of the startups some in banking they have got really affected uh, but then I know a lot of other tech startups who are still investing in marketing. Oh, wow. 
And uh, you know, this gives birth of second question. Though you have mentioned that you know people uh, are investing in marketing in offline and online, both the activities, and there are companies who are still going on uh, with the budgets. So still, there are uh, we see that there are a lot of companies who are still you know shrinking their budget. So in the light of uh, this scenario, wherein you know companies are shrinking budget, how companies can prioritize their marketing initiatives and allocate resources effectively to achieve a maximized impact. So was certain things which we did we do in Aspire is that we have been investing in inbound marketing for the last six, seven years. And as you know, inbound marketing is a long, it's a test match, not a T20, right? It's going to take its time to bear fruit. But then what we did last six, seven years is the one which is helping us through the downturn, the sense that we are able to optimize our budgets where to put in because the inbound engine is still running. It doesn't stop, right? So, but then we still are able to choose, uh, uh, we have the luxury to choose which channels to invest, whether it's an APM, whether it's LinkedIn, whether it's some kind of a content syndication. So we are able to pick and choose because we know that even if uh, some of the paid uh, budgets, uh, budgeted campaign stops, our inbound union still is giving us the branding, the lead generation, the demand that's still happening. So it doesn't stop. So uh, what we have, uh, started six seven is years ago is the one which is actually helping us through this current downturn we are seeing for example we have an id services business our customers have budget issues they cut projects but then what uh is still helping us where we are still getting more inquiries from customers is that our inbound our uh, content investment in content how they find our content that's still running and i think that's probably the single most thing if any company can do that's what they should do uh, so that what happens is, even if the downturn uptrend up doesn't matter, the engine still runs and does the work for you. While you are, you have the luxury now to you know, even increase or decrease the budget, but then you are able to optimize it better. So for us, we are still investing. We have invested a lot in ABM. So all those things are bearing for at this point of time. Well, that's great. And if I may ask, what are the strategies and approaches? Personally, you have adopted to optimize your marketing efforts while operating with the limited resources and facing cost pressure. So we have always been on lean marketing, in the sense we don't have a big team, but what we have is uh, a team. Uh, for example, we have a lot of we invest a lot in SEO. So a lot of my team members are experts in SEO. A lot of my team members are experts in content, and uh, they are. Uh, they are not very senior people. They are junior to media people who can learn. So we invest a lot of people who are ready, ready and hungry to learn and do better. So those things have worked. Again, these are not overnight things. This has been invested last five, six years. The other things which we have uh, done is we have actually increased our effort on ABI, where uh, now we know, okay, these are the customers we want to go after. How do we bring them to the table? So in one way, what we are doing is we are spending the effort on uh, the current downturn so that when the upturn happens, we are ready. See, a lot of times what happened, you wait for the upturn, but then upturn has already happened. Then you invest in starting your marketing engine, and then you realize you are too late in the game. So uh, it's difficult to time the market, but what we want to do is keep optimizing your budgets, keep out, invest in SEO, invest in inbound, invest in ABM. I think when the upturn starts, it will help you out in the sense it kind of balances out okay whatever you lost uh in the uh, uh downturn you are actually reaping fruits when the upturns are because you're not just because there's a downturn you can't just stop marketing and that's what my always still marketing never stops um, but the key thing for any marketing uh person is you need to know what channels work for you a lot of people one of time what happens is marketing guys they get lost in the operational part of marketing. Hey, I need to do this. I need to get a content ready. I need to send this campaign out. But what they don't do is take a step back and say, hey, what is working for me? What is not working for me? And if what is something is not working, leave it out so that when these kind of budget optimization comes, you know, okay, I'm going to invest only in this because I know this channel works. So you're able to, uh, what is it, give a better ROI to your senior bosses, right? Any company in my way, the first question, what is marketing doing, right? It's difficult to say that, but what we do here in Aspire is that we, we have a lot of metrics in terms of what is our cost per lead, how much our budget we are spending, what is what are we aiming for? 
So we have a good track on the metrics. At least uh, internally, we look at it. And uh, that's how we go about it. So uh, it's just that if your marketing engine works smoothly, you don't have to worry about downturn. It takes care of itself. So that's great. And you talk about uh, matrices and KPI. So are there any specific metrics, matrices or KPI that you focus on to measure the effectiveness of your campaign? Typically, we look at engagement. So, for example, uh, how many new customers have come to my website? See, one of the things about organic is you're not going to get someone to say, hey, uh, uh, I'm going to become a customer next month. Uh, Raghu, you have talked about uh, specific matrices and KPIs. So, if I may ask, what are the specific metrics and KPIs that you focus on to measure the effectiveness of your campaign? So, uh, typically, I like to keep it simple. So, one of the things we do is, what is our website engagement? How many people are coming to the website? Where are they coming? What companies are coming? Is it relevant? The relevant traffic. So, for example, if we are in India, a lot of time what happens, people looking for jobs come to my web, web pages. So, we say, okay, uh, it can bloat up the website visit. So, we actually uh, monitor by geography, okay, how many from the US, how many from Singapore, Australia. So, we actually have a lot of data on geography visits and engagement. So, my thing to my team is that, you know, get that engine running. If you're able to increase the visits from your target markets, you will pay the, you'll get the results a few months from now. And uh, typically, it works, it does work for us. So, uh, and because, because we use ABM tools, we kind of know who is coming. So that will also helps. That also helps us in the sense. Of, okay, am I talking the right uh, market, right company, right title? So in that way, we are uh, actually able to uh, go after companies where we think we have better engaged. The other thing which, which we do is because of this, there is a better sales engagement. So typically, marketing and sales don't see eye to eye. But then, what we want to do is this is a sales intelligence tool also, right? If I can help the sales and say, hey, I have these list of companies who are actually interested in what uh, we are offering, then that's the intelligence for them to go after these companies and see how they can uh, in engage in a conversation. So ultimately, I look at marketing as creating conversations. So this is one of the tools uh, we look at. So it's for, for me, it's more of one is where the in part of the inbound marketing strategy. Uh, other is how, to ca how can I enable sales? Right. So that is something which we uh, focus on a lot. So if you look at one metric, what uh, we do is, is basically engagement, nothing else. And I, it's almost like what Donnie says, uh, follow the process, things will work out. So if you are able to get the en engagement uh, right, the, they will come. We have no uh, doubt on that. With this, one more question that is striking my mind, though it looks simple, you know, while we ask or while we think. However, I feel it's a little complex. So, what role does technology play in helping you to optimize your marketing efforts within a constrained budget? Are there any specific tools or platforms that have been particularly valuable in achieving the cost-effective and targeted campaigns? The uh, technology that cannot replace marketing, I always felt. So, one of the things I tell my team is, you need to have your product or services positioning right. That's the basic thing, right? Technology is an avenue to, in terms of to achieve your end results. So, if you're looking at what technology we use, uh, uh, we have rely heavily on API. So, we use tools as uh, I think we use a couple of tools, Record Tab, Rollworks, which we use for ABM. We obviously there are a few digital marketing tools, the SEO in terms of like SEMrush, for example. So, we use uh, which will help us optimize our SEO. And now, with the advent of Chat GPT, you know my content team cannot live without that. So, uh, you know, but again, that's not the uh, Bible for us. So because ultimately you need to have thought leadership content, which comes from the SMEs in our company. So we focus on that a lot. Uh, our technology investments, believe it or not, it's very minimal because the challenge with investing in technology is we can't use it as standalone. For example, if you're investing in uh, just an ABM, I can't just use it as a standalone. I need to integrate with other system like a CRM. And those things are not easy, right? If so, a lot of I think a lot of marketers get carried away with investing in technology. The biggest problem in investing is if you don't have the uh, ability to integrate those with other systems in the company, then 
the, the usefulness is probably uh, 30% of what it could be. Like, for example, if I'm investing in ABM tool, then I'm going to track all the companies coming to website. And then if I integrate the CR and the sales guys get to know who's coming automatically, so I don't have to reach out to them. So unless different systems talk to each other, the usefulness of tech in marketing is not there. So uh, I think that's something a lot of people make. Uh, so the key thing I would advise is invest in tech, but you've got to be very careful what you're getting into because that also needs more people who, are, who, who have expertise in uh, building a marketing tech stack. You can't just use one tech marketing and say, hey, I'm, I, I'm marketing, I used a lot of technology marketing. It doesn't work like that. You need to build a stack, which, for example, whether it's an ABM, whether it's SEO, whether it's your marketing automation, everything needs to talk to each other. If you're not able to do it, then you will probably take a long time in getting the ROI from the investment which you make. So that's probably my biggest uh, insight into tech market building a martech stack. I would say, you know? make sure they all talk to each other. Thank you very much, Raghu, for your valuable insights. And you know, experience speaks for itself. So while talking to you, we have also understood. I'm sure my audience must have also benefited out of it. And thank you, everyone. Thank you, my audiences. Catch me live on the next episode of Marketing Monday by CXO TV while we would be discussing relevant and interesting topics like this. See you there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Navi. Thanks for having me. For more updates from CXO TV, please like and subscribe to our channel.